this is the i mean uh, this is a great privilege for every one of us to uh, gather together in the presence of god and uh, uh, i'm so happy to introduce uh, and welcome uh, the guest speaker uh, speaker of today praise god and uh, uh, he's my dear friend uh, pastor alex mulamutil uh, from san diego am i and uh, uh, he's the he's the senior pastor of uh, uh, india christian uh, fellowship uh, i mean uh, santiago uh, you know uh, the reason i uh, call him my dear friend is uh, uh, he's my he's my college mate and uh, uh, that means uh, we did uh, our first theological uh, studies together in hebron bible college combinard uh, maybe almost uh, uh, 30 years ago so he was a famous uh, figure in kerala in those days because uh, he was the secretary and president of uh, pyp pyp is a, is a i mean young people uh, uh, young people association pentecostal young people association of the ipc uh, denomination not only the uh, uh, the uh, in charge of the pyp he was uh, i mean involved in some other activities of uh, uh, ipc uh, organization uh, organization in those days and uh, uh, but now i'm so happy uh, uh, to 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 know that he is famous in uh, preaching the gospel and uh, uh, involved in uh, uh, christian ministry in in different places especially in 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 the state of california praise god and in fact i knew uh, that uh, uh, he is somewhere in uh, uh, he is somewhere in us but uh, uh, i don't i didn't have any idea about uh, in which state uh, uh, he is uh, uh, ministering but by the grace of god i mean after coming to i mean california i got a chance to contact uh, uh, dear pastor alex mulamortel and uh, i know that uh, i mean his face is well familiar for uh, i mean many of you uh, because he was a guest speaker uh, of our retreat uh, in 2017 i think and uh, uh, but i was not there for that retreat and uh, uh, anyway i mean he is going to uh, uh, speak the word of god with us today and uh, let us all put our hands together and welcome pastor Alex Mulamo till now praise the lord hallelujah and let's sit in the presence of god with a prayerful attitude thank you pastor praise god thank you so much pastor uh praise god i'm good to meet you it is a indeed a joy and privilege to be with all of you and i know most of your faces uh with uh, you know uh, fond memories of spending time with you all and we still cherish those memories and we thank the lord for god is sustaining each of you and god is blessing the ministry and uh, the kids are growing up and so fast and uh, we are so good to see all of them and uh, pastor sam gutti mentioned we are been friends and brothers uh, for more than 3 decades and so delighted excited uh, to see him and the family and his son was look exactly like him when pastor sam gutti was young so it was so good to see all of you and what the lord is doing in and through your life and the ministry and uh, good to see all of you and we thank the lord for uh, god's guidance god's protection god's presence upon all of our lives we know that this is a very trying and a challenging times but in the midst of all these things and uh, god is giving us the opportunity to come together uh, this is a new season of ministry new season of uh, learning new season of walking with the lord so everything is totally different and but still god is the same and he is the same yesterday today and forever so we again we want to greet you from uh, san diego uh, our service is starting right now here and so that is the other rooms so that the service is going on so we also do the same thing on the zoom come together uh, to worship and uh, we do uh, online uh, things everything and uh, we know that this is a difficult time so continue to a prayer for each other encourage each other and that is what we want to do you know one thing i just want to encourage as uh, uh, jason was sharing the same line i just want to share what the lord has impressed in my heart uh, this is something new uh, nothing new this is the same thing we repeat again and again but one thing i just want to uh, to mention each time wherever you know we are together remember that this is a time that we test uh, our metal and who we are you know what is our commitment and how we are committed to the lord and to the local church and i encourage always you know this is because we are living bombarded with the information at this time but remember that this is a time you truly know that you are connected to your local church uh, to pray for the leadership and stand together for god's glory and uh, this is what we need to do the analogy that we need to see is actually when it comes to crisis whether in leadership or in in ministry or in life altogether 
when the crisis hit how we respond to that you know when the crisis come first and foremost responsible to take care of you first then your family then you help other people the same way that we need to do ministry at this time also remember that our primary responsibility is now to the body of christ where god has placed us you know it is interesting that if you don't like my sermon you can click to the next church all of a sudden that is the way it, we are living in our days so there's so much of information so much of connection so much of things that happens but at the same time remember that god has put us together as one group in certain places in different uh, locations in this period of history of mankind for a special uh, purpose so we pray that god will use each of you for god's glory and thank you again for this opportunity to join you together uh, to worshiping you and i was really enjoying the presence of god and thank you for the youngsters who are ushering us in the god's glorious presence and also for all these wonderful testimonies that we heard and also the verses the kids were memorizing and reciting that is also very encouraged to hear may again pray that god's blessings upon you and thank you jason for sharing god's word it was a blessing and we continue to do the same thing as we are going to look into god's word we remember that this is a time and season there is i think that three things that is spreading faster uh, you know one we all know that the virus is spreading faster and but more than the virus there is two other things also spreading very fast one is fear the virus of fear people are afraid and scared and concerned and worried and anxious in all those things that happens and the people are eager to return to the normal whatever that normal was before and before the pandemic so people are afraid the fear is gripping in the hearts of people even for the believers that is the truth and also you know the false news or the fake news that is spreading there is all kinds of conspiracies that are going every single day and so in the midst of this how do we navigate our life as christians how we are able to live our life as god's children and now that is a question that we need to see that so god's word is eternal that gives us the uh, the guidance in how to move forward with our life so let us look into god's word this morning a simple passage a familiar passage to all of us and since this is a new medium we try to interact in a different way and i assure i, I encourage you please you know pay attention and this is a time set apart for the lord this is a holy time in that sense open your bibles if you have the bible or if you have the bible app or the screen or whatever that it is you can open that and you can read the scripture i just uh, share this not preaching just trying to teach something that is very simple to encourage us to remind us not even teaching in that sense just uh, remind us what god's word tells us during this season of time so i'll try to share my powerpoint here but uh, i know how long all those things will work you know so uh, pay attention to this so let us read god's word together if you have the bible you can turn or you can read from uh, from here in a hebrew chapter 13 verse 5 and 6 hebrew chapter 13 verse 5 and 6 wherever you are read it out loud in, in your homes you read and this is a time again to fill the home with the praises of god you know and the bible says that the the dwelling of the righteous is filled with the shouts of god so that, that's what we do there's an opportunity to do that not only we are not able to come together one place but we are in our respective homes there we can praise the lord together so read god's word together this is hebrew chapter 13 verse 5 and 6 this is from the niv or read this is what god's word keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because god has said never will i leave you never will i forsake you so we say with the confidence the lord is my helper i will not be afraid what can mere mortals do to me or read from another version so this is from the amplified version that explains little more in detail so we'll be able to get get immediately what that tells us so it's a different version so let's read that also together let your character your moral essence your inner nature be free from the love of money shun greed be financially ethical being content with what you have for he has said i will never under any circumstances desert you 
nor give you up nor leave you without support nor will i in any degree leave you helpless nor will i forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you assuredly not so we take comfort and encouraged and confidently say the lord is my helper in time of need i will not be afraid what will man do to me let's read one more word version and from the paraphrase from the message you know just to paraphrasing the same scripture in a in a poetic way that eugene peterson that gives us that uh, paraphrase and this is what goes let us read that also don't be obsessed with the getting more material things be relaxed with what you have since god assured us i will never let you down never walk off and leave you we can boldly court god is there ready to help i am fearless no matter what who or what can get to or me you know most of us are fearful or anxious and that is the truth during this season that i have said now but what is the greatest fear of man i think that there are so many fear we can talk about that some other time but the greatest fear that all of us is the fear of the unknown what is going to happen tomorrow the next minute when this is this pandemic is going to end how long oh lord is the prayer that we all always ask in our heart we ask this question as uh, station said you know we are living in a world of immediate gratification we want today's miracle yesterday itself in any time you want to come to and say tonight today right now god is going to deliver you we all get excited all of a sudden that is the way our people beat around the emotions of people that is what people do but we are a group of people those who are our faith is a faith of waiting waiting for 2000 plus years for the return of our lord and uh, this is may not be encouraging to many of you but remember that god is not in a hurry of anything at all god is not in a hurry god does everything beautiful in his time so we are not only clinging on to the promises of god rather we are clinging on to the time table of god also god does everything beautiful in his time so here god says that the answer to all our fears the answer to all our fears is the presence of god i am not going to tell you anything new everything i just want to tell you to remind you all of you are mature believers i know and so just want to remind you these things you know what is the antidote for our anxieties how do we overcome our fear the solution to all our fear is the presence of god so in these two verses one promise four or five amazing truth we are trying to squeeze out we are able to learn from this words two verses one promise four simple thought that we can see so god says that this is one the promise is that i will never leave you <coughs> nor forsake you so god's promise are based on his character if you take note you can write down that that is what is everything that we do god's promise is based on his character every election cycle comes there is a messiah will appear and they will say that i will take care of social security i will take care of the college loan i will take care of health care i take care of this and that all kinds of things or oh, people just get excited and go after that people and uh, lo and behold we all know that the people forget the promises that is a cycle that repeat again and again everywhere in the world that's what happened but god's promises are not just a wishful thinking that the god's promises are based upon his uh, character you know there is hundreds of promises in the bible that we all know you know there is a man called storms uh, uh, everick or storms dr everick or storms and he said there are 8810 promises <coughs> excuse me recorded in the bible 8810 promises recorded in the bible and he classifies this promises into eight different categories eight different categories there are 7487 promises that was made from god to man 
you know i have been researched this actually i just read it i just reporting to you i it is fascinating to see that there are 7487 promises god made to man 9990 991 promises that we see that one person making a promise to another there are 2000 290 promises from man again to god the god man is making a promise to god i will do this i will do that there are two promises are made by an evil spirit there are two promises made by god the father to god the son there are all these promises when you take out of this 7487 promises the basic promise or the foundational promise of the bible is this and all those things you just distilled it down we come to this one promise that i will be with you i will never leave you god's presence is the promise that god makes to his people the name of god himself is this when we talk about the coming of christ to this world i mean you know that name emmanuel the lord with us so in our faith in christian faith our god is not only a transcendent god that is up somewhere else there but god is a god he is so imminent he is so close he is walking with us he is uh, keeping our tears in the bottle he understand the sigh of our heart and that is a god that we serve so the foundation of promise the entire bible is this i will be with you that is what god said to abraham in uh, genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 genesis chapter 15 verse 1 i know there is another promise god is repeating to repeating to abraham you know i will never leave you i will, i am your reward i am your shield i am your great uh, you know uh, reward god says to abraham so this promise keep on going in exodus that we read you know god said to moses i will be with you in exodus chapter 3 he says that my presence will be go with you and i will give you rest god said to joshua as i was with the moses i will be with you god said to to david in the promise that we read that that what was one of god's uh, uh, david's uh, assurance always in his heart even though i walk through the valley of shadow of death i will fear no evil because god is with me the lord is with me so our god is the god <coughs> excuse me and the god is the god who is with us and god promises that again and again and this is the foundational promise i will be with you i will be with you keep on read that you know throughout the scripture you take a concordance and go through this all these verses to see that is repeated again and again god said to uh, to the people of israel through moses in deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 the lord himself goes before you and will be with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you do not be afraid do not be uh, discouraged in isaiah 43 verse 2 again that is same thing is repeated when you pass through the waters i will be with you when you pass through the rivers there they will not sweep over you when you walk through the fire you will not be burned the flames will not be set to your blaze you know matthew 28 20 the famous verse that we all of us know and surely i am with you always to the very end of the age john 14 verse 18 jesus says i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you here we comes again in hebrew chapter 13 verse 5 and 6 that is quoted again from the old testament the author of hebrew says that keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have because god had said never i will leave you nor i will forsake you so this is what we are going to address here this words we try to memorize today before we leave so this is just simply that is what we want to do that's exercise we want to do so what god tells us here god says that the fear of lack how do we overcome the fear of lack there are four different kinds of fears that we see in this passage the first fear is the fear of lack how do we overcome the fear of lack the fear of lack is overcome by the contentment of his uh, provision in the contentment of his uh, provision read that verse again if you have the bible is open before you hebrew 13 verse 5 and 6 keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with uh, what you have because god has said never will i leave you nor will i forsake you now this, remember that contentment is more than a matter contentment is more a matter of perspective than our circumstances as uh, we heard earlier you know you can have or cannot don't have 
you may have abundance or lack still in both of those circumstances you are able to live a content life unfortunately many of the people those who are confused with what is luxury and what is their basic need and we are living in a world and people try to accumulate as much as things for themselves if anything that this pandemic taught us is that many things that we thought was essential is not need anymore at all that is a one good lesson i think that this season is teaching us many things we thought this is essential without which we cannot live at all that become very you know it, it is easy to forsake we don't need any of those things at all so this is a challenge this is a christian discipline in our life to live a contented life a contented life that is important so people accumulate many things why when you take the entire teachings of jesus in the gospels you know the essence of this we can see that one thing jesus keep on repeating more than even faith or prayer or uh, love or uh, go, heaven or hell or any of those things jesus majority of his uh, teaching was about money and he just uh, declared that you cannot serve two masters at the same time you cannot serve money and god at the same time so that was a challenge that jesus brought to his disciples and as christians remember that why we are concerned about all these material things more and one of the things that we are living in this uh, materialistic world this materialistic world why we are concerned about these things there are many many reasons one thing is that we want to show others we are successful based upon how much we have now that is the way many times people measure success if you have this and that and all those things all of a sudden people go oh that man who's made himself and he is he is a successful person that is one thing other more than that you know people want all these things is because of security they think that if you have this much there in the bank or in their stock or or as their asset what happen their life is secure so that is one thing that people try to accumulate all these things and the bible is not against money bible is not against uh, making money god is someone who gives us a strength to make money the bible teaches that very well all the goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life those things are there but we have to see that in a balanced way here so why people need all the either success or because of their security they put their security in the money and that's where the people live and not only that this contentment they that give them fulfillment uh, into their uh, life but remember that contentment is not what you want but it is wanting what you already have it is not what you want but it is wanting what you already have paul writes to timothy one of the version that was uh, no that was uh, misguided sometime people read in a different way first timothy chapter 6 verse 6 through 8 paul writes to timothy as his uh, beloved disciple and he is giving me a charge i think this was one of his theme of Paul also tried to tell others what to do, but godliness with the contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world; we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with the, that. Peter Paul says, "This cultivate godliness, cultivate godliness in you, and cult create a gratitude, a grateful attitude for everything." the lord have many of us are concerned what is going to happen to us tomorrow maybe how this is going to end you know what what is my future you know because i don't have many of those things but remember that god's promise that we see over here is that you be content in him content in him you know because of many people try to find their uh, their fulfillment either in their asset or in their association or in their appearances you know all those things they try to see that who they are but our identity is not based upon any of those things our identity is based in christ paul writes to colossians he says that we are complete in him i don't need anything at all i am complete in jesus christ i am complete in christ so the material things can never bring contentment when we have this we need more and we all know that very well it can never satisfy the deepest need of our heart it will never able to you know satisfy the deepest need of our heart so we need to understand that the things of this world 
are temporary. The riches of Sodom will become ashes one day. So we want to make the right choice based upon that. So why material things cannot bring contentment? Jesus says that in Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Then he said to this man who was successful, you know, he made all kinds of things. He said, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. If life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Life does not content in the abundance of, consist in the abundance of possessions. David says in Psalm 37 verse 4, delight in the Lord yourself and he will give you the desires of your heart. Remember that as Christians, this is what makes us different from all other things. The people out in the world, they're trying to, to, to bring you know, their identity based upon what they have. But you and I as God's children, in the midst of all these things are hand, happening around us. You know, we want to forsake the love of money, the greed. We want to be a tickle in every interactions that we have. And how do we do that? We delight in the Lord. As God said to Abraham, I am your great reward. And you know, as Asaf had same problem, he had a confusion about when he looked around the blessings and the success of the wicked people. But finally he came. And to the end of the Psalm 73, verse 25, that he said, whom I have in heaven other than you. Whom I have in heaven other than you. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that we will learn to be content the things of God. If you are afraid of the lack you know, of things in life, he is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Paul writes to Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. You know, one of the verse. The, Verses again that we misquote many times out of context that we take. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11. Paul says that I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I learned to be content. So what does that tell us? Contentment will not come automatically. We have to cultivate it. We have to learn. We have to discipline our faculties. Our discipline, our, our flesh, our body our appetite, our aspirations. Now we need to discipline that. That's what Paul has done. Paul says, I know how to live in abundance. I know how to live in lack. I live in both extremes and both sides, but I learn to be content when I knew that I am complete in Christ. I don't want the applause of the people. I don't want to live for the approval of others. I don't want to accumulate all these assets because I know who I am. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That is what Paul in that context says. My brothers, sisters, this is what we need to exercise these days. Learn to be content with God. Someone said like this, contentment this means contained. We are not empty. Many people have so many things in this world. So much things in this world. And you and I look, you know, through our eyes, you see the, oh, they are, they are, they are loaded with the things. But they commit suicide and they end up the day. You have seen that. Big celebrities, people, they end up in up their lives with the drugs and other things because they are unable to sleep. You know, they are there empty. You see that things are outside so many. But when you come to inside, there is nothing at all. But as a Christ-filled person, that is a Christian means, right? As a Christ-filled person, we know that we are contained by God's peace, by God's presence at all times. So Paul says that, you know, in the midst of his jail, he's living in the jail. He says, I learned to be content. My brothers, my sisters, let me tell you that adversity and abundance, both are the opportunity to prove what we really believe or the philosophy of our life. Both abundance and adversity prove what we really believe. That is an important lesson that we need to leave. There is a temptation that comes when we are, you know, when we have everything, sometimes we forsake God. Adversity, abundance proves that Jesus, Jesus to be greater than all other riches. Our abundance should prove that. You know, Jesus is richer than all the things that we see. All these things are perishing things as we have heard earlier. It is perishing things. But our adversity proves that Jesus to be the true, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus to be the, the true riches of our life. So contentment does not grow without cultivation and maintenance. We need to live, we need to create a biblical worldview about things. My youngsters, brothers, 
sisters, all my children, those who listen to me. This is what we want to create in you. When you have a biblical world, you learn to see the things through the lenses of the scripture. See the things through the eyes of Jesus. That is what we are able to see the world. Now, then only we can make the statements like Paul said, I consider all these things are rubbish, garbage. You know, I don't consider any of these things are to be boastful, but I just consider these things are just rubbish because he was seeing things through the lens of eternity, everything. So we should be able to create a biblical worldview, even from the young, you know, all the children. This is what as parents, as leaders, we struggle to strive to create that biblical worldview in you, you are able to sing three, see the things through the lenses of the scripture. So remember that adversity or our abundance, both will reveal is the philosophy of our life. But Solomon prayed this prayer. That's one of the beautiful prayers. You know, I heard this prayer every single day when he grew up, when my grandma used to pray. You know, we are not rich people or anything, and ordinary people, farmers who live, and try to make the ends meet out of things. My grandma, my Amashi used to pray this prayer more or less most of the days from uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7 through 9. So, uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7 through 9. It's a beautiful prayer. We can study that prayer also. Very beautiful. One of good prayers. Read this prayer if you have the Bible. Read that. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7 through 9. I ask two things from you, Lord. Don't refuse me before I die. Keep me from lying and being dishonest. And don't make me either rich or poor. Just give me enough food for each day. If I have too much, I may reject you and say, I don't know the Lord. If I am poor, Sorry, I, might, I might steal and disgrace the name of my God. Two things I pray. Look at that. It's a beautiful prayer. How many? I don't know how many of us pray this prayer genuinely. Don't make me either rich or poor. Just give me enough food for each day. Give me enough for each day. A person who lived in the old covenant, he even prayed this prayer. As people of the new covenant, how much more we can pray that prayer. And I just want to challenge you and encourage you today. Any one of you, you have the fear of lack. How I am going to meet my end. I know that most of us may not have that. But many of us sometimes go through those situations. The Bible says that, God says that, you know, don't be, don't be content with the things of this world. Be content with the God himself. So fear of lack, we overcome by his uh, provision. The fear of lack, we overcome by his uh, provision. That is first thing, the fear of lack. The second thing that we read over here is the fear of uh, loneliness. The fear of uh, loneliness. The next, next thing that we see there, how do we overcome the fear of loneliness? The fear of loneliness will be overcome by his presence. Not only we have the contentment of his provision, but we know we have the companionship of his presence. Let us read that verse again one more time. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 through 6. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. We don't know what we are going to face tomorrow. That is a truth. But we all know that very well, that God will never forsake us. You know, he, he, he will never forsake us. We know that this is the season of people. You know that sometimes we take the things so granted. And I had come across with the many, many, many people you know, last several years with uh, helping with the, either with the chaplains or with, with the counseling, other, other, other areas I have seen. You know that you will be surprised. There are people, there is no one else in their life. No human interaction. There is nobody to talk to them. There is no phone call they can expect. Few people live so lonely. I think that this is the greatest pandemic, even before this pandemic. This was loneliness was an epidemic that the people were going through. And many people, even the interesting fact is this, even when people, those who are living in the midst of others, they live a lonely life. People are living in, under the same roof. They live lonely life. People are in a relationship. Still, they live lonely life. People are in the church, in the community. 
part of the fellowship but they can they they will never able to overcome the loneliness because people don't understand them they will never able to make a connection they will never able to make a relationship with anyone else there are so many people like that thank god that you and i have a relationship thank god you have parents thank god you have friends and pastors and elders and leaders those who are there you can pour out your heart that is a great thing church remember that this is essential part of our faith fellowship is an essential part of our faith so we cannot forsake that we no matter not only just we're coming together for uh, for the sake of coming because this is very essential to our faith this is a tragedy in the modern day you know all these technologies that brought together unfortunately you see that people get into their own world see that people are in their own world all the time everybody trying to put their own earphones and they are just shutting down from the external world they are trying to deal with their own loneliness you know that is a reality that you and i see in this world people need some time you know to love and they need to be loved and they without it the lives will bring fear and frustration in their hearts but look at your god god says here god said never will i leave you look at the consistency of god's promise here never you know there is no break in god's divine love for us look at that endurance never will i forsake you the consistency and the endurance that we see you know what i i was trying to show you earlier was uh, from the uh, from the amplified version you know in the root language that that we see that there is uh, you know at least there is uh, five negatives in it it keep on saying keep on saying keep on saying what it says i look at that words again you know that that, that on the screen you look at there that your character your moral lessons your inner nature be free free from the love of money shun to greed and be financially ethical verse 5 onwards for he has said i will never under any circumstances desert to you nor give you up nor leave you without support nor will i in any degree leave you helpless nor will i forsake or let you down or relax my hold that's that's very 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 beautiful expression i will never relax my hold on you i surely not there are five different negatives trying to repeat again and again and again why there is five negatives needed you know there is an old old story the preacher used to say that there was a young pastor in his new pastorate fresh from the seminary you know with all this excitement he started his pastorate and he went to uh, visit an old grandma and he read this passage to the grandma because she was by herself there and uh, he said to this grandma like this you know grandma you know in the original language there is five negatives there to repeat god says again and again and again and to assuredly to tell them you know that i will never leave you the grandma responded to this young pastor said for you young folks god may have to say five times for me one time is enough one time is enough why god is repeating these things you know this is what my conclusion after 30 years of this learning and studying and teaching and encountering with uh, my own problems and ministry and all these things the entire bible you can distill down to one simple word this is what god's message Uh, to the humanity individually collectively one simple word that's why i understand this is where i understand that you know i i hope i am not wrong but this is why i understand you know all these things should distill down to one thing you know what it is trust trust god trust him trust him we become anxious we become worried and we become concerned about the many many things but god says that i will never leave you god's companionship he is the immanuel people will change circumstances will change you know many people youth and i thought that will never forsake us they all will leave i guarantee you that you know there is a limit for human love because we are human there is a limit and we cannot go further than that at all but god says that i will never the consistency of his love towards us he says that i will never ever leave you when you are discouraged his presence see you through when you are lonely his presence is there to cheer you up when you go through are worried his presence will calm you down 
when you are tempted his presence will help you out if you feel that you are lonely even in the midst of your own house remember that god's presence god understand that god understand that even the midst of your community you may be standing among the people but you still feel that loneliness god understand that god is always with us in isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 isaiah 41 verse 13 the bible says this god's promise to the people of israel we can quote that also and claim that promise to us here isaiah 41 verse 13 for i am the lord your god who takes hold of your right hand and says to you do not fear i will help you i hope you hear this again let me read that to you for i am the lord god your god who takes hold of your right hand and says to you do not fear i will help you fear not god is with you he fear not he is your god fear not he will strengthen you fear not he will help you fear not he will uphold you what a promise that god gives us here john piper you know restates these promises using five of the propositions to this this is john piper's words he says that i am i am your god god is over you i am with you god is by your side i will strengthen you god is inside of you i will help you god is all around you i will uphold you god is underneath you god is over you god is by you god is inside you god is around you god is underneath you i just want to encourage you during this season this is what i keep on saying to myself to my family to my church to everybody i see this will soon pass god is with us this will soon pass god is with us if you pray that how long o lord is your question the answer is that god is with us and god sees you through in this situations also the fear of lack we overcome with his provision the fear of loneliness we overcome with the his uh, presence god's presence is with us and the third thing that we see over here in the next uh, portion of it the the confidence of his promise how do we overcome the fear of the unknown you know always we always want to know what is going to happen tomorrow there is an eagerness in all of us that anxiety all of us but look at here what god says that the confidence of our promise this is what god said he will never leave us nor forsake us we have the contentment of his provision we have the companionship of his presence and then we have the confidence of his word he the confidence of his promise look at this because god has said that is important because the lord has said he has said this is the confidence of his promise the as i said in the beginning remember that god's promises are based on his character god's promises are based on his a uh, character so this is an in the, in the root language again you study that is a word of intention god says that he himself has said that is exact translation of that word he himself god himself has said so let us stop there and ask that question now what it says or who is the one it says who is the one who says this the the omnipotent the omniscient the omnipresent god this is the confidence of his promise when i say i can i don't have the strength for the next day or the next week or the next season of my life what god says the omnipotent god answers and says that i will never leave you nor forsake you when you say i am afraid i am anxious the god who knows everything else he says that i will never leave you nor forsake you when i say that and i am lonely i don't know the god is everywhere tells us that i will never leave you nor forsake you my brothers my sisters there is a contentment of his uh, pro- his provision there is a companionship it says that i will never leave you nor forsake you we have the confidence of god's promise he says that i will never leave you nor forsake you remember that this is not just an advice of a preacher but this is the promise from the word of god himself this is god's word so let us remember that it is based on the divine authority 
God, he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, this is one of the important things that as Christians, we have to remind ourselves. In the Pilgrim's Progress, John Minion write that, you know, there is a time the Christian was walking to the celestial city and he came to the doubting castle and he was, you know, he was gripped by the giant despair. And uh, I assume most of you read that, all of you have read The Pilgrim's Progress, the beautiful analogy of Christian's life in this world. You know, and he says the Christians went to this uh, giant despair and he was just locked down, locked up in this uh, doubting castle. So he, when we look around what he see, there is a, in his cell, there is a rope, there is a knife, there is a bottle of poison, there is a, all the tools of suicide. Because the despair tells us that there is no hope. What is the point? You know, why? How long you are going to struggle like this? Why you live in this agony just to forsake and quit? This is not worth anymore. That is what keep on saying that. So he tried to pray. He cannot. He tried to sing. He couldn't. He cannot do any of those things. And all those things, all of a sudden one day that uh, he, that occurred to him, there is a key that in his pocket. The key of the promise of God. And he opened the doubting castle by the promise and he was able to get out of that place. I pray that the, today, many of the people, those who the, go through this mental agony and there is no way out for them. And people always ask this question, why people become depressed? You know that millions of people, those who go through mental agony and depression during this season, and many people say that you just cheer up and look around and do the things and all kinds of stuff. But unfortunately, that's not the way it works. Remember that. Unfortunately, it will not work like that. Because the devil's favorite card is always desperation and discouragement. Pull us down and look around. There is no hope whatsoever, whatsoever at all. There is no hope at all. But remember those places. One thing we are able to overcome is the promise of God. He himself has said he himself has said i will never leave you nor forsake you i encourage you today my church my dear brothers and sisters you know if any of you those who listen and you go through this kind of an agony if your anxiety desperation don't know what to do next and about your future about your career of your life or you are standing in the crossroads of any of those decisions pay attention slow down Slow down. Listen to the word of God, to the promises of God. He said, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Look at the consistency. No matter what you face, no matter what you go through, God's word is to us is that I will never leave you nor forsake you. How do we overcome the fear of lack? We overcome the fear of lack by the contentment of his uh, provision. How do we overcome the fear of loneliness? We overcome the fear of loneliness by the companionship of his presence. How do we overcome the desperation in our life? How do we overcome the fear of the unknown? It is by the confidence in God's uh, promise. Then we come to the fourth thing over here in this words. It says that the fear of unknown, we overcome by the promises of God. The comfort of his uh, protection the comfort of his protection the fear of danger the fear of danger hebrew chapter 13 verse 5 and 6 let's read that words again so we say with the confidence the lord is my helper i will not be afraid what can mere mortals do to me when you have his contentment and you have the companionship and you have his confidence then you must have the comfort and his uh, Courage. The confession is, is repeating. Will you will you find your contentment in Christ, your companionship in Christ, your confidence in Christ? And you can say, find the comfort in his promise, then you can say that the Lord is my helper. We 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 don't know, I don't know what you go through. You know, the people around you may not know what you go through, but we don't know what we go through, but we can boldly say this. The Lord will be my helper. There may be difficulties and challenges and troubles 
that we may face in our life. But remember that we can say along with the psalmist, Psalm 46, verse 1 through 3, the psalmist says that God is our refuge and strength and even the very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its water shore and foam and the mountains quake with the surging. When you face the tomorrows, find your contentment in Christ. Find your companionship in Jesus. Find your confidence in his word. Then you will find your comfort and courage and you can say boldly what man can do to me. And we have to hold on to that promise of God. When Paul was you know, taking to as a, as a political prisoner to roam on his journey, as we read in Acts chapter 27, you know that he went through these uh, storms and the seasoned uh, train captain couldn't control and the people in the ship all become desperate. They tried to throw the things and kill the prisoners, all those things. But Paul stood in the midst of that. Paul was not a captain. Paul was not a sailor. Rather, he was an evangelist, as a missionary, as a Pharisee, as a teacher. But he stood that night and he made this declaration in Acts chapter 27. He says that last night, an angel of the Lord God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. The angel of the Lord whom I serve and whom I belong. Remember my brothers and sisters, you know, that is the greatest confidence that Paul had in his life in the midst of everything else. You know what it is? You know, whom I have and whom I serve. You know, I belong to him. I am his property. Paul's favorite term introducing himself was, I am a slave of the Lord. I am God's property. I am his doulos. I am God's property. If I am God's property, it is his responsibility. That is the way he lived his life. That was the conviction of his life. He suffered. He lived in loneliness. He went through all these things. Why? It is because this conviction that enabled him to move forward in his life. My brothers, my sisters, my friends, I just want to encourage you. Just cling on to that promise. I know whom I serve, Paul said at another place. I know whom I know, whom I believe. I know I, I belong to him, whose I am and whom I serve. When we have that kind of a confidence, doesn't matter what is going to happen around us. We are not just praying for this pandemic to go away. Rather, we are learning to trust the Lord in new levels during this time. That is what I think that God wants us to teach this time. Not the things around us. The definition of success is changed now. Right? The things that the way we do things change now. But God is teaching us in none of our abilities or training or degrees. None of those things are enough. At this time, there is a new level, new devil, new challenges, new trials that we face in the midst of all these storms raging around us against us. It's only one thing you and I can do is to trust him, trust him, trust him. So Paul says that, you know, he's the presence of God that uh, sustained him in the midst of those things. So God's strong anchor it is, the, is his promise. We cling on to the promise of God. Corey Ten Boom once said like this, when Jesus takes your hand, he keeps you tight. When Jesus keeps you tight, he leads you through your whole life. When Jesus leads you through your life, he brings you safely home. He didn't call you to drown you in the midst. He called you to go to the other shore. He called you to go to be with him. And he said, I will never really leave you as orphans. You and I are not helpless, hopeless people in this world. Rather, we are God's children. We belong to him. We are his property. Take confidence in the promise of God. So we overcome the fear of lack by his provision. We overcome the loneliness by his presence. We overcome the unknown by his promise. We overcome the danger by his uh, protection. So we have the contentment. We have the companionship. We have the confidence. We have the comfort in the life, in the, in the, in the Lord and his promise. And he boldly say that what? I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the last thing, because of what we do, that this is what, say that because of what we do, because what God has said, 
and what we do because of that. Look at this word here in verse 6. So we say with the confidence. We say with the confidence. That is confession. You know, that is, a, that is a big topic to talk about that, I know. But look at that words again. Verse that is, so we say with the confidence. So wherever you are, you have to do this. This is an, an exercise you can do every single day. You know, this, this week, you try to learn and do that. You know, one thing is that the psychologist to say that your self-talk. So you have to assess your self-talk. You have to listen to yourself that you talk. It's not only psychology. It is scripture also that we see. Because you speak a lot to yourself all the time. Right? You all speak to yourself all the time. That is, and that is a thing. That is a natural, normal thing. When you are young, you have imaginary friends. Right, children? You have imaginary friends. You talk to the imaginary friends all the time. And so you speak louder those times. When you are getting older, that sound to become less and less. You speak inside of you about you itself. And the things that you hear all the time. You repeat the things that you hear. The lies of the devil. The affirmation of other people. And the accusation of the enemy. All those things, you just echo that in your brain, in your mind all the time. You speak to yourself all the time. It's not only motivational or psychological thing. It is a scriptural thing. The Bible says that Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, bless his holy name. Forget not his benefits. You know, David is speaking to himself. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You know, Psalm 42, 43, all these places. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? You know, you speak to yourself. So confession has a big power. And that is an important thing. Confession we understand uh, in various ways. One is we repeat, you know, uh, the, the statement of faith. That is a confession. Confession of, of, of our sins uh, towards God. That is another thing that we do. That is essential for our salvation. Remember that. It is we believe in your heart, confess through your mouth. Jesus died from the, uh, died on the cross on behalf of me and rose from the dead. That is where you will be saved in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Believe in your heart and confess through your mouth you confess that is essential part of our salvation that is where our salvation begin but as christians we continue this conversation in ourselves what do you say to yourself then all the time what do you say you confess make it as a practice you confess god's word this is what unfortunately there is another extreme of this confession you know that is called the word of faith movement and those kind of people you know they try to create things out of their words they think that they have the power to do that that is the other extreme of this teaching. But there is a balanced way to understand the scripture here. What is the balance of it? It says simply this, you repeat what God says. That is what confession is. You repeat what God says. So what is here we read? In Hebrew chapter 11, uh, 13, verse 5 through 6, that we read, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because what do you do then? We say with the confidence what God has said. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. So learn. You know, that is what children, you memorize the scripture. It is important. It has a big impact upon your life. You know, in various ways. As the psalmist says, I hide your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Now you don't have to hide your word in your heart. Now you hide your word in your hard disk, right? So you can Google it. But that is not the scriptural way. You try to memorize the scripture. You know, so as God's people, let us repeat what God says. Start to preach to yourself. Do not repeat what the enemy tried to tell you. Reject those lies and say that, devil, you are a liar. You know, what you say is a liar. You, what the tell, things you say is lie. But God says about me, I am complete in him. I am complete in him. I am washed by the blood of the lamb. I am a child of God. I am healed by his tribes. My God is my helper. What man can do to me? I say to myself, God said, do not be anxious about anything. Repeat God's word to yourself. Repeat God's words to yourself. What does he used to say? Instead of we, we sometimes believe, you know, sometimes they believe the lies of the enemy. But today I just want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, in the light of God's word, this is a path to change our self-talk. Listen God's word and repeat it. Listen God's word and repeat it. God's promise is his presence. So I say the Lord is my helper. God's promise is that I cannot, nobody can ruin my life because I will say, therefore, 
I will not be afraid and I will live for the glory of God. Psalm 31 verse 13, David says this same thing. He exercises this. He says, for I hear the slander of many. There is terror on every side. They cons conspire against me and plot to take my life. This is what is happening around him. Verse 14 of Psalm 31. Look at what David says. He says that, but I trust in you, O Lord. But I hear, you know, there are slanders, many. There is terror from every side. They conspire against me, but I trust in you, O Lord. And I say, you are my God. Say that louder. And I say that you are my God. I say that you are my God. So let's say that together this morning in God's presence. Lord, you are my God. When I am ambushed by anxiety, you are my God. When I feel alone and empty, Lord, you are my God. When I wonder if things are ever going to get better, I say, Lord, you are my God. When I feel like ashamed and guilty, Lord, I say, you are my God. When I feel like you cannot go on, Lord, you are my God. When I see you are lonely and tired, Lord, you are my God. This morning, this season of uh, anxiety and pandemic, uncertainties, this is my encouragement to all of us. Let us cling on to the promise of God. Let us cling on to the promise of God. And what we see over here, if you have a fear of lack today, I pray this morning, the Holy Spirit will fill you with his presence and you will be contented by him. You will know that that is all I need. Psalm 16 that we read, Psalm says that, you know, and there is joy in your presence. There is eternal pleasures at your right hand. Nothing in this world will never able to satisfy. All these things leads to use and abuse to addictions. You'll never able to overcome those things that will never satisfy. Contentment is contained, contained by Christ himself. If you fear any kind of lack, God's promises for us is that he is our shepherd. We shall not be in lack in anything in life. God will provide everything that is needed. If you are lonely today, the fear of loneliness, God's presence, the deepest desire of your heart, he knows that with nobody can your husband or wife. Sometimes we try to try fulfillment in our relationships. No, they are not meant for that. They cannot be, they are humans. They cannot. Only God can fill the vacuum in your life. The loneliness that you go through in the midst of people, you may feel that loneliness. If that is your case, God's presence is the answer to that. God's companionship is the answer to that. Your fear of unknown, what is going to happen tomorrow about your visa or your job, or your children, their future, or your sickness or whatever that it is. You know, remember that God is able to help you. You are able to overcome that by his promise. God himself has said the fear of Danger is overcome by his protection. So I encourage you today during this season, let us memorize the scripture and read this verse one more time as we close and finish here. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with the confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Why can mere mortals do to me. Would you please pray one more time in God's presence as we close. Let us pray together wherever you are. Just close your eyes for a minute. And uh, you know, whichever the way that you pray that today you cry unto the Lord. How long, O Lord, is your question? God's answer is there. God will do everything beautiful in his time. So cling on to the promises of God. He says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let us pray together. Father, we are grateful for this opportunity, even though we are far from one another. Lord, you are so close to us. You are the Emmanuel. You are the one who is with us, the one who knows us. Lord, the one who is around us, underneath us, in us, and for us, O oh Lord. So we are so grateful for that this morning. 
Father, I commit to each of us in your hands today. Lord, the enemy is trying to bring all kinds of fear. And Lord, discouragement, desperation, anxiety in our hearts. But we cling on to you because you yourself have said, you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we commit our verses in the hands. We pray for Pastor Sanguti and his family and the ministry and the church. Lord, the elders, the leaders, our youngsters, Lord, our children, the families, each of them in the hands. Lord, I pray that the city, they will flourish and prosper. Your kingdom will expand for your glory, O oh Father. The gospel will advance and saturate that city through them and many other churches also, oh God. We pray your peace and presence upon all of us. Enable us to live with the conviction that we belong to you, O oh God. Bless us together. We love you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.